Hello everyone, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome back to my wine channel. Today I'm really excited to bring you a review of a iconic wine, uh, iconic trophy wine, iconic um, standard wine standard. It's the Penfolds 2008 Grange Bin 95. If you followed my channel, I have done other reviews of other Penfolds wines. So that's really, I'm really excited about this. I've drank uh, Bin 28. I've drank bin um, 30, uh, 389 and I think 600 and another one of them, I think 407. So I've had a lot of experience with Penfolds wines and it's kind of nice because I can compare and contrast. I really like to do this with wines to drink not just from top up, um, but everywhere in, in the lineup of the, um, the wine. So it's kind of um, really exciting for me now to be able to try Penfolds Grange um, at a certain point. So um, I won't go through the story of Penfolds Grains. You can both go back to my video of uh, Bin 389. Um, that has the history of um, the Grange and, and Penfolds a little bit better, but I'm just gonna kind of summarize this time so I don't repeat myself um, in videos. But essentially, it's the brainchild of Max Schubert who worked with the winery since he was a young child. He went to Bordeaux to visit Bordeaux, um, very impressed decided to bring back um, the concept of um, a, a using Shiraz as a grape varietal uh, for his flagship wine, um, met with um, basically a, a lot of skepticism. And you'll see this with a lot of great wines. I'm in my upcoming video about Sasakaya, same thing with the Marchese. They did all these things. They were um, real pioneers and no one believed in them. So this is really a message also for us in the wine world. Um, you know, whatever you wine today, you know, we rate it so highly, maybe, um, you know, we haven't discovered the, the next wine yet. And so don't poo pie wines because everyone was poo pieing uh, Grange when it came out and look where it is now. So, um, you know, experts can be experts, but you know, just trust yourself. And if you like a wine, uh, maybe you'll find and discover um, the new wines or will be ahead of your time also. So getting back to the story, um, Grange was produced in secret for many years because um, no one liked it. It's, uh, it debuted in 1960 and um, it's actually the bin number associated with Grange is 95. Um, all the most of the Penfolds wines have a bin number. It's just a cute thing because they used to put um, the wines in different bins um, to distinguish them. Um, originally, actually, they just started to do bins based on year. So bin one, I think, was 1961, and you know they had different years. But then they decided now that uh, Grange has always been 95. So you'll see that on the label later on when I show you. Let's talk about the vintage. So 2008 was an iconic vintage. Uh, Wine Spectator and Robert Parker both gave it 100 points. And this is another lesson that we have because if you look at the wine rating charts, I just pulled up one for uh, Robert Parker, um, for the rating, um, the rating for the vintage of 2008 in Barossa Valley, it was actually 85. So you're thinking, well, it's a lousy vintage. How could it be a 100 point wine? This is the whole thing about generalities. Um, there's always differences. And so what explains what happened here? So 2008 as a vintage was uh, dry and it was a, a good summer. It was kind of a mild summer. And so that was ideal conditions. But at the end of the growing season, and the growing season is a little bit different in Australia. Um, it's, I guess, winter is summer, summer is winter. So the end of the growing season means March. There was a huge heat wave, which should have killed everything. And so fortunately, um, the um, Penfolds people picked enough grapes early and they were able to blend it with the, um, the later picked, picked grapes and they somehow came up with this great wine. A lot of people who waited too long for ripeness uh, picked too late and got hot, got hit with the heat wave and it was a, subsequently it was a bad vintage for most wines. The exception is Penfolds Grange which did a wonderful job. And here's another um, kind of you know about generalities. So in general everyone like these single vineyard um, um, offerings. Penfolds Grange isn't a single vineyard offering. Um, it's actually a 
it's a collection of their grapes from Barossa Valley, Clare Valley, and also McGill Estates. I think most of it in 2008 came from Barossa Valley. But they're an expert in blending. As I said in my other videos, um, Penfolds has always been um, great at blending wines and combining wines. And so again, all I'm saying is that, you know, don't get caught up in generalizations. Oh, the, you know, you see a vintage 2010 Bordeaux is great, so every wine is going to be great. No. Uh, you know, off vintage 2007, oh, it's off vintage, so I won't drink it. No. So don't get caught up in generalizations. Really understand the story and also expect to be surprised sometimes on the good side and on the uh, unfortunate side. Um, but, you know, Respect the wines and, and taste them for what it is. And that's why I always say this channel is not a TV show. It's not for me to kind of give you a, a you know, look, you know, you're, you're at home just viewing it and then, you know, you just get it all great. No, it's for you to kind of, kind of compare and contrast your taste and your experience to mine. And the key to wine is not wine knowledge. Um, reading in books is very important. It's great. But the key to wine really is to drink it and to experience it yourself. And so um, that's kind of the point I want to make um, on these videos. A couple of uh, more technical um, facts about the 2008 vintage. It was 98% uh, Shiraz, 2% Cabernet Sauvignon. Again, grapes came from Barossa Valley, Clare Valley, and McGill Estates. Mostly, I think, from Barossa Valley. It was um, aged in, I think, American oak hogsheads, which are bigger, um, barrels for 19 months and I don't think it was released um, until 2013 and um, just going back to some videos from that time period I think it was very controversial but it was a hundred point and people were like can it really be hundred points so it was the first hundred point wine uh, since I think 1976 that was rated by Rob Rucker a hundred points so um, iconic wine um, very collectible to this date Let's take a look at the bottle. I think it's a really neat bottle because it's got so much information. It's dedicated to Max Schubert, who passed away in 1994. Penfolds, range, bin non five. It's bottle number, and then this 2018, 2008 vintage. Got a little bit of information about the history of Penfolds range. On the back, each vintage is a little different. A um, little bit of information about this vintage. And then let's go to the wine. Um, it is, 2008, so what, 14 years? It's pitch purple black, basically. It looks like black cherries. Um, there's absolutely no aging on this wine at this point. So I would say uh, it's still very, very youthful and it's probably got a very long life. This is kind of embarrassing. I did um, do this whole tasting of the wine but unfortunately something went wrong with my mic and so I'm gonna have to do a voiceover. But that's good for everyone because I went on for nine minutes to talk about this wine. I loved it so much. So what I was saying in this video is that I had um, drank it in the night before and it was very tannic. We had it with beef. Um, we did can it for three hours and um, then this I had it uh, put in the fridge overnight and then I was tasting it again. So originally when I drank it, uh, again, not much on the nose. Actually, I drank it with the uh, 2016 Sasakaya, which I've also done a review for. That was a little bit less tannic, but this one after three hours was not showing very much. So now I'm retasting this. And uh, my first impression was this. Actually, I'll save you the... Uh, because what happened with the first um, nose and the tasting, I wasn't getting very much. But I think sometimes what happens, um, I don't know if any of the people have this, but when you start drinking a wine fresh, you, your taste buds need to warm up a bit. So I wasn't getting very much on the nose at first, um, but you'll see that as I taste it the second time, I have more um, reaction to it. So I was having difficulty smelling anything at this point. Um, but after I smelled it and then drank it, um, I, I guess my tongue got, uh, or my palate got very used to it, so I could um, was able to kind of taste it better. So anyways, what I was saying in here is that it was mostly plums, dark plums, uh, dark berries, uh, and there was a lot of, um, in fact, the first day I saw, saw oak, I saw some licorice, and then today, uh, the second day, I saw some violets, 
and some lilies. So it was a little bit floral. And um, the good thing about these voiceovers, is I actually drank it again after this tasting and detected some menthol. So it was really just continuing to evolve as I was drinking it. Um, now on this second taste, I was tasting um, lots of dark fruit and then also tasting um, um, I guess oak, tobacco, um, and uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, kind of uh, charred flavors. So it was really toasty. And what I was making, um, kind of saying in this video was, I was feeling the balance and it was unusual because I'm not a big alcohol person. I don't generally like big alcohol wines. This was 14 and a half percent. I guess the great thing about this was that um, it was so balanced. So the fruit intensity was very high. It was full body. And so therefore the alcohol didn't really bother me at all. It was very so balanced that it didn't bother me. And um, that's the key with wines balance. Like as long as you know you can have high alcohol, but if you have everything else very intense, you're fine. The, the wine just tastes very smooth. Um, and it's just a credit to the winery to be able to make that type of balance uh, in check with such a very full, what I would call a full throttle wine. So everything here was uh, very much in balance, um, heavy intensity. And my rating, I know it's a hundred point for Wine Spectator and Robert Parker. At this point, it's a 97 point wine for me. Um, I think it's really young still. Uh, I think it still could improve. Uh, what I was saying in the video is that I think it should go, um, if you really, really must drink it today, I would say minimum eight hours in a decanter, but best to wait another, I would say eight to 15 years. I think that's when it will start to hit its drinking window. Uh, really delicious wine. It's the type of wine that you keep drinking and it gets better and better and you keep on loving it. So uh, through this video, what I was saying is that I kept on drinking it and just kept on loving it more and more and uh, almost waiting for the camera to stop so I could just drink it um, and just enjoy the pleasure of the wine. So I hope uh, this kind of mistake on my part, um, not turning on the mic for this last part has not detracted from the video and I hope you've enjoyed the video. So um, until next time, happy drinking.